Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I said praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. If we can, let's all stand. It's good to see everybody here tonight on a Wednesday night. Uh, got a lot of new faces. God's doing new things. Amen. We're going to take up uh, all of our prayer requests at this time. I wanted to share real quick, though, with you a quick testimony that uh, I heard that's not from anywhere around here, but it, it built my faith. And uh, I was listening to a song the other day by William McDowell, and he was telling about this testimony. I think it was last year, the year before. But uh, we hear about cancer and everything being gone, but this was just different. You don't hear about it. Did anybody ever watch the medical shows and whatnot where you, you see them, them brain-eating amoebas is what they're from, people getting in the lakes and it gets in there. and There's been a hundred and something cases ever. It's very rare. But uh, out of them hundred and something cases, 150-something, there's been four people survive, ever. Well, at this man's church, the, there's this woman, her and her husband, and they had six kids, and she was pregnant with the seventh. And uh, one night she woke up in excruciating pain, terribly. And her husband asked her, on a scale from one to ten, how bad are you hurting? And she said, a ten. And he said... Anybody that's had that many kids and says 10, they're in some pain. So he took her to the hospital. Long story short, they started to do tests, and they was going to send her off to do more tests, but they said, it's serious. You need to be praying. Well, there was another nurse that grabbed a hold of him as they were about to leave, and he said, uh, I could probably get fired for saying this, but I'm going to tell you, they're not, wor they're not worried about what they told you. They're worried that she has a brain-eating amoeba, and... Uh, it's not looking good. So he texts his pastor, says, hey, we need to pray. Well, the pastor got a prayer group together, and this convicted me, but they got a prayer group together and came to the church, and he prayed all night long. I mean all night long because he said, I wanted to see a healing in this family's life. Well, they went to do the test, and they said, ma'am, most of the time we've seen this, it's been in more than one family member. Is there anybody else in your family shown symptoms? Turns out all six of their kids were shown symptoms of the same thing. They got them into the hospital. They started doing tests on every one of them, and they turned out seven of them. All of them had the brain-eating amoeba. 97% mortality rate. Four people ever survived it. The church began to pray, though. They prayed all night long. And uh, the, the crazy thing is, when this lady woke up from the anesthetic or whatever it was, there was a nurse sitting on the end of her bed. And she said, didn't you hear? And she said, hear what? And the nurse said, there's no amoeba. That amoeba left every one of their bodies. So what? when there was four, when there was four people that ever survived, God almost doubled that in one family. My God does crazy things, things I never even thought of. I've watched those medical shows in the past and seen that, seen that it was so deadly. But do you ever realize, hey, God will just heal that. He'll just take it away. When the doctors can't explain it, he takes away cancer. He takes away diabetes. He takes away arthritis. Whatever it is, he can take it away. The crazy thing is they, they had never seen that nurse before that she described. That There wasn't a nurse that looked like that, Brother David. You can't tell me that while they wasn't in a church praying, while they wasn't in a church interceding for this family, that God didn't send an angel from heaven to say, take that amoeba and just tell them it's no longer there. That amoeba that where there was going to be death, where there was going to be, the news reporters were already there because it was going to make history. There's only been a hundred and something cases ever, and there's about to be a whole family wiped out in just a day or two. But within 24 hours, no medicine, but just some prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. It built my faith. I don't know what it did to you, but it built my faith. And I'm believing that that same thing is going to happen here. That somebody's diagnosed with cancer, they're going to go back and get scans and it's going to be gone. Brother Larry, when somebody having spots on their lungs, they're going to go and get retested. And they're going to say, I don't know what happened. I don't know what you did in the meantime. But now when you came back, there's no spots on your lungs. There's nothing in the way what we've seen in the x-ray before. Because my God is a healer. Amen. He's going to do it again. Is there any needs on this side tonight? Brother Terrence? 
in Jesus' name. Mr. Chris. Yes, ma'am, I believe it. Sister Heidi? Yes, ma'am. Scarlett? Sister Eloise? Yes, ma'am. I believe that answer will just go away in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody else here in the middle section? Yes, ma'am. Brother David? Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Sister Nadine? Yes, ma'am. Brother Ronnie? In Jesus' name. Kevin. Amen. The Lord knows every need. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Now, I just talked about the miracles that God does. Now it's time to ask him. Go ahead, Sister Heidi. Man, let's remember him. Um, Brother Larry just brought to my attention. Let's also remember John Michael and his family. And uh, that brings something else to my attention that I wanted to have prayer for that I thought of today. I knew that I know that we grew last year. I know that in spite of what was bad, God brought good from. But uh, I want to pray that there's a covering placed around this church. That there's a covering around this family. Because I don't want what happened last year to start happening again. I don't want to battle those same, same battles. I don't want to, to have to leave because I just don't. So that, that, I want to pray that, that we don't have to worry about it. That no virus, no nothing. I don't know whether, whether whatever you believe, any vaccine or any not, no vaccine. But I got a God. I got a God that can make a way. And I believe there's going to be a covering place around here. So I want to take that before the Lord too. But I just spoke about all the faith that, that brought forth from miracles. And my faith is increased. So now I want to take these needs before the Lord with a, that same faith. Expecting it to happen. And Brother Larry, if it doesn't happen, God's strong in my weakness. Doesn't matter. But, Sister Maria, I still expect it. I have faith. Because he's done it before and he'll do it again. So if we can, let's take all these needs before the Lord, which is many. God, I pray right now. God, there's some big needs, but you're a big God. I pray, God, that the same, the same healing power that I just spoke of, God, that, that took away the brain-eating amoebas, that, that took away cancer, that took away spots off of lungs from the x-rays, that healed people of diabetes, that healed people of arthritis, that healed people of AIDS, that healed people of all these diseases, of all sicknesses, of all viruses. God, I pray that that same healing power will have virtue in this place tonight because of our faith that we've already had, because of the testimonies that we've heard. I pray that we can take these needs before you every every problem every sickness i pray that everybody battling any kind of a, a sickness and infirmity in their body that we'll take it before you right now in the name of jesus god it's only in that name that we see these healings take place it's only in your name god that we see it happen and it's only in your name god that we're going to worship you afterwards because i'm praising you right now i'm praising you right now because i'm believing for miracles i'm believing for healings god we're going to hear phone calls from these prayers we're going to go home and people are going to call us. People are going to text us. We're going to see them posting about it on the internet. We're going to hear people talking about it in the workplace. We laid hands on the sick and they are going to recover. We're going to lay hands on the brokenhearted and they are going to be healed in the name of Jesus. We are going to see people being filled with your spirit in this place. I pray last of all, God.
God, that there's a covering. Let your hand come around this church, everybody, every family that has a part of anybody in this church. I pray that there's a covering upon them, that the virus, that everything is happening in this world, that it has no place around here anymore, that it's not going to come into this church. It's not going to affect our lives. We're not going to see anybody lost from it. We're not going to see any death from it. We're not going to see anybody come in here and, and bring the devil with them and bring the virus with them because it's not welcome in the name of Jesus. Let's worship him right now in praise and song. Hallelujah. Every tree and every that song but I, I wonder what would happen if we just gave our heart to him where God didn't have to just steal it sister crystal if we just offered it said here you go Lord take it all take it all from me hallelujah I like what I feel in this place tonight there's such a sweet peace there's such a sweet peace in the presence of our God amen Let's take up the tithe and offering at this time. Sister 
how do you get them up here? Uh, for those watching online, there's GiveLify, which is the app many of us use. There's PayPal, available at RiverbendPentecostals.com. Or the cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals at 1031 Mill Street, P.O. Box 477 in New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Amen. While you're getting the prayer up there, I'll say, prayer works. Amen. Amen. Prayer works. That's really all I can say. We, Brother Larry, we can sit up here and preach and say everything we ever want to. Say all the cool things from the Bible, and there's tons of it. Dad just preached a, a, a fiery message Sunday. But uh, if we ain't a praying church, we're a dead church. And uh, we, we just got to start praying. If we want to see those miracles, we've got to pray. If we want to see this prayer come to pass, we've got to pray it with faith expecting it to come to pass. So if we can, let's all stand and, and let's just pray it. Pray it with that faith. Pray with me. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, the tithing is in the gold pans and the offering is in the wood pans. Give and worship your way up here in the name of Jesus. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and
the Lord just a hand clap of praise for just a minute. He's worthy of more than that anyways. He's worthy of more than that, but I can give him at least a couple of seconds, at least a couple of seconds of my highest praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you thankful that there's a better life? Yeah. Amen. How many of you could testify to that, that I was this, but now I'm this? Yeah. Amen. I was lost, but now I'm saved. I was gone, but now I'm a child of the King. Amen. Amen. I could testify to it. Amen. I'm blessed. We are blessed. Amen. And we're blessed to be here tonight. Hallelujah. The children can go ahead and come on up here and line up. Amen. I want to say one more time, too, how, how good of a crowd we have, really, for uh, everything considering got a lot of people here tonight, a lot of new faces. Amen. Got a good crowd of children, too. Thankful for that. Amen. Y'all go ahead and head on back. Hey, I'm believing Vacation Bible School was just the beginning. The seeds was planted, and now they're going to start showing up. And new ones are going to show up. And then their families are coming behind them. I'm believing it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brother Larry's about to come give the word, and uh, I've done talked to him a little bit in, in prayer. I know that it's anointed, and God's word's going to go forth, and the fruits are going to show. Amen. The youth can go ahead and come on back here with me, and uh, y'all preach with Brother Larry. Amen. Thank the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. Where would I be? Without his mercy, amen? amen? Where would I be without his goodness? If we could all stand tonight, if you have your Bible, turning to Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, many of you will know this scripture. We've heard it quite a bit of late. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 says, And they overcame... Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Brother David, would you pray, please? Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I know many of you have heard the saying, you give a man a fish and he will eat for a day. And teach a man how to fish and you'll feed him for a lifetime. Well, according to that proverb, Brother David, the knowledge of fishing leads to sustainment. Not only to the person that you teach how to fish, but the people that they teach how to fish. But what would happen if everyone kept knowledge to themselves? Just kind of give you an example. What would have happened if Louis Pasteur wouldn't have told about his penicillin find? What would have happened if Johann Gutenberg hadn't told about his printing press? Many of y'all I see brought your Bibles in. There wouldn't be them today. What would have happened if Thomas Edison wouldn't have invented the light bulb? What would have happened if... Alexander Graham Bell wouldn't have invented the telephone or Henry Ford the car or my favorite Willis Carrier hadn't invented the air conditioner wouldn't life be a little bit different I remember and I'm not that old but going to school brother David just a few years ago seems like just yesterday but I remember opening the windows up at Risco brother Robbie there wasn't no air conditioning sweat run down my face all my pencil all over my papers, my homework, it wasn't fun. I did not appreciate that. But it was life. When I'd go to my grandfather's house, and he had a big old window unit in his window, and he'd sit there and you'd look at it, but every window and every door was open, and the fan was going in the window, and he wouldn't turn that thing on for nothing. He'd be sweating, and he'd be sitting there with his bibs on, rocking in the chair, just looking up at the sky, and I was about to die, Brother Robbie. 
But eventually, with a little persuasion, he'd say, son, do you want me to turn that thing on? And I said, yes, sir, I do. It was something about being able to speak to him him realizing my problem, him really realizing that I needed some air in the house that led him to turn the air on. It was the knowledge that he had that when he flipped the switch, something was going to change in the atmosphere. I was going to be happier, and the house was going to be a lot more comfortable. i tell you what would happen nowadays if we learn to share knowledge a little more frequently, Brother David. If somehow, some way, we would get out of our comfort zone and realize that there are people that want to know more about this God that we serve. That there are people that are longing for a desire to be more like Him. That they see differences in each and every one of us and they want what we have. Amen? We cannot have any fear in our life, but we have to learn to speak boldly. In 1597, history accredited Francis Bacon with the saying knowledge is power. Now, we know that that's true, but true power comes from knowing the source of all knowledge and power. And we know him here tonight, Brother David. That is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the source of all knowledge and power. He is the one that is able to do all things. And when I know him, I am able through him to be an example every single place that I go. Everywhere my feet go, the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man, Sister Eloise, are ordered to the Lord, and the Lord delights in his way. No greater joy for me in my life to know that my way pleases the Lord, that everywhere that my steps go is ordered of the King of kings and Lord of lords, and that I can be exactly what he wants me to be every single day of my life. What a powerful truth that is. To know that God can use me to be a blessing every single place that I go. I'm reminded of a fan sitting in my grandpa's house. Every once in a while, that fan that was in that window, that old box fan, the wind outside would begin to blow and that fan would turn real slow. I could just see it spinning. But you know what? The fan was not turning of its own accord. It was only moved by things that it felt. But guess what happened when I plugged that fan in to a power source? Then when I turned the fan on, it began to produce wind. That's what we have to do, church, is realize that when we plug ourselves into the power source, that we can produce exactly what God would have us to produce for every single situation that we face in our life. You see, what good is the knowledge without sharing it, Brother Terrence? What good is it for me to have understanding unless I learn to use it to help somebody else? What good is accomplished when I am healed of God, when I am blessed of God, when I receive things from God if I don't open my mouth and tell somebody else? What have I really done with my blessing? Some people choose to hold back their knowledge simply because they can be labeled the smart one or they can be labeled the wise one. And other people hold back their knowledge because they are afraid to step out in faith. They are afraid to do that which God has called them to do. But any way you slice it, in every circumstance I just mentioned, silence is detrimental to growth. Silence is detrimental to growth. We got to have spiritual growth. And when we sit on the knowledge, Brother Terrence, we no longer allow growth in our churches. We no longer allow growth in our lives because we have to learn to open this, what God has gave us, and begin to tell us of what he's done for us. Brother Gio asked me Sunday, we was all sitting in the back. Brother Blake will remember he asked me to minister tonight. And immediately when he asked me that, I acknowledged Brother David had already ministered, and I acknowledged that I would, and I began asking God right then, God, I'm going to need a word. I know i got to work this week. God, I'm going to need something. I want you to give me something, God, that's going to strengthen somebody. Give me something that's going to encourage somebody. And then we get back to elements class, and Brother Skipper begins to talk, and I was like, oh, hang on a minute. He began to talk about the things of God in his life and how he used to be something, but his testimony began to tell of how life is beginning to change for him, and he's realizing some things. He opened his mouth, and he testified of the goodness and 
and the mercies of God. That's what I'm talking about here tonight. Then just a little bit later, Brother Walter said, I got something to say. And he grabbed the mic and something began to burn within me because Brother Walter said, I've got a testimony. I've got to tell somebody of the goodness and the mercies of God. I've got to open my mouth because something inside of me, Brother Robbie, is burning and i got to get it out. Then I hear Monday night, my wife begin to testify of the miracle that took place at her work. Something begins to burn in me when I hear those things. Something begins to click on the inside of me. And I get excited because I know the same God that touched them can touch me. The same God that is working miracles 2,000 years ago is working miracles today. All we have to do is have faith to believe that he is able. He is able. We should never underestimate the power of a godly testimony. In 2017, an article was written in Arise Sister titled, Six Reasons Why You Should Testify of God's Goodness. I'm about to tell you five of those things. Number one, testifying is an act of thanksgiving and worship. The Psalms, as we all know, are filled with prayer, hymns, and thanksgivings of David unto God. He would say things like, when I called you, Lord, you answered me. He would say, when I was pushed backwards and I almost fell, you rescued me or you helped me. David's testimonies of God told of his and God's relationship and how God preserved him, Brother David, even in the darkest hours of his life, even in his failures. Even in his failures, David realized and he cried out to the Lord and then he told how the Lord heard him in every single situation of his life. That worship, that factor, that, that praise between God and man that David had, that, that opening of his mouth and worshiping the king of kings led the saying that David was a man after God's own heart because David had something inside of him that he could not keep to himself. David had a relationship with God that would not allow him to keep his mouth quiet, but he had to open his mouth and tell of the goodness and the mercies of a living God. Testifying is literally recommending God to someone as a great solution to any problem. Think about that for a minute. When you testify, Brother David, you are literally saying, God is able to fix that for you. God is able to do that for you. How do I know? Because he did it for me. And if he'll do it for me, he will do it for you. Number two, it edifies the reader or the listener and the one who testifies. Reading through David's testimonies of God's goodness, I still get edified today. When I read about them and I sit there and ponder on what he's saying, something in me burns right now. I begin to think, Brother David, as you was reading about the, the 23rd Psalm, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Every situation that David talked about, every situation that he faced, he had something in him about how God delivered him out of those things. He had something in him that said, hey, God did it for me. God is leading me. God is guiding me. God is directing me. God is powerful. God is able to do all things. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He opened his mouth and he told the Lord, I know I might not be able to feel you today. I might be down and I might be out. I might be battling situations. I might be tired. I might be weary. I might be wore out. But I tell you what, I'm not. I know for a fact that God is able to do all things. And I know for a fact that if I open my mouth and I praise him and I magnify him and I seek his face, he will lead me and direct me and guide me and strengthen me because because he is able to do anything he wants to do. Telling of what God has done for you has a way of stirring up faith in every single person that you talk to. Hence, Monday night prayer meeting. Hence, Brother Walter, Brother Skipper. All of those things 
made me want to worship. All of those things, Brother Blake, made me want to yell out, yes, God is able. It just solidifies the knowledge that I have in me that God is still working. He's still in the miracle working business. Number three, it opens up the way, Brother Robbie, for more blessings. God is pleased when you acknowledge his name. Telling someone about what he's done is acknowledging his power, his goodness, his blessings, and his love. And when I do that, it pleases him. And he says, hey, I'm going to bless him some more. I'm going to pour out upon him blessings that he cannot contain. You know why? Because I know he ain't keeping them to himself. He's giving them to somebody else. He's not just sitting there growing fat on blessings, but he's pouring them into somebody else's life. He's using what I gave him to be a blessing every single place that he goes. And he's helping others, which is the purpose God sent us to do. I know some of you realize that one of the most powerful advertising tools in the world is word of mouth. If I go to a restaurant and it's good and I say, hey, y'all, I'm going to tell you what, old Bo likes to eat now. And I went down there and got me a ribeye and a baked potato and a so-and-so and a salad and a big old glass of sweet tea. Since I can't drink sweet tea right now, I kind of really want some. Really, really want some. But when I tell, man, Brother Blake, when I cut that old steak open, it just fell apart. Man, it was great. And Blake said, really? Hey, Terrence, what you say? Me and you roll on down there and get us one of them steaks old Bo was talking about. So Terrence and Blake get one. As soon as they leave, the phone rings. Man, you wasn't lying, Bo. That steak was great. Next thing you know, Terrence is at work saying, man, I had the best steak I ever had in my life the other day. That's word of mouth. And word of mouth spreads like wildfire. Don't believe it? Don't believe it? It does. Things begin to happen. It spreads like wildfire. Before you know it, some little old hole in the wall restaurant way out in the sticks has got seating or standing room only because you can't even get in there because they serve just what I like to eat, food, anything that is good, and I'm going to enjoy it. That's what word of mouth does. But when we keep that to ourselves, it does not benefit anybody but us. And it really don't benefit us because if we're not careful, we'll sit there and get fat and drained and not do exactly what God has called us to do. But when I tell about the goodness and the mercies of God, I'm letting other people know that the results that I experienced, you can experience as well. That the things that I had, you can have. That the blessings that I've had in my life can be the same blessings that you have in your life because God is alive and well and able to do all things. Number four, it puts the devil to shame and it frustrates his plans. You see, the enemy isn't happy when you start to talk about God in any way, shape, form. He's definitely not, not happy when you begin to tell of his goodness and his mercy. He don't like that at all. And he's definitely not happy when you tell about how God brought you through some situations and how you open your mouth and say, hey, let me tell you where God brought me from. The devil don't like that. So when you testify, you're letting someone know the truth and you're exposing the lies of the adversary. The lies that they've heard day in and day out, nobody loves you. Nobody cares about you. You've went too far. Nobody, God don't even hear your prayers. You might as well not even pray. You've done failed way too many times. Those are lies from the pit of hell. And the devil wants you to believe that. But when I open my mouth and say, hey, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. That if he done it for me, he'll do it for you. Then a little bit of faith begins to build up in that individual and they realize, hey, hey, maybe I do have a hope. Maybe I do have a chance that if God can do it for Brother Larry, he can do it for me. He can reach me. He can touch me. He can encourage me. And he can draw me up out of the pit that I've placed myself in. With the word of my testimony, I am able to overcome the adversary. I'm reminded of Daniel. Daniel prayed three times a day. Because of his prayer life, people hated him. Threw him in a pit. 
a den of lions for his destruction. Placed in the pit, the king's seal was now placed upon that big old stone, and the king went away sorrowful because he didn't want to do it. All hell began to laugh. All of his adversaries was laughing. It's over for old Daniel. We finally got rid of him. But the king went to his bedroom at night. He said, I can't eat no food. I can't enjoy any pleasures. I'm worried about my friend. I don't like what I had to do. And the Bible talks about how he tossed and he turned all night. But first thing in the morning, guess what happened? He ran down to the place that was meant for destruction. And he cried out, oh, Daniel, is the God that you serve faithfully able to deliver you? And what did Daniel say? Out of the silence, Daniel opened his mouth and he said, O oh, king, live forever. The God that I served sent an angel and he shut the lion's mouth. I'm going to tell you right now, Daniel was not afraid to testify of the mercy and the goodness of God. Daniel was not afraid to keep his mouth shut, but he opened his mouth with everything that was within him. And he cried out and let people know that God had delivered him. The same thing that was meant for destruction of Daniel wound up being the destruction of his enemies. The very thing that the devil meant for bad, God can turn it around for good for you and destroy the very one that was coming against you. That's how powerful our God is. He is able to do all things. Let's give him a hand clap of praise and thank him for that promise tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It confirms, number five, it confirms your faith in God. Sometimes, you've heard this before, sometimes when good things happen to people, they credit it to chance or they credit it to luck. I was lucky, man. Hey, man, I, I just got by by the skin of my teeth. That was luck. Or maybe it was my own ability that I thought it was. Or maybe it was a talent or something like that. Or my own strength, people say. They say it happened by chance, or it was lucky that that didn't happen to me, but because I'm a Christian, I know different. Because the Bible says in James 1 and 17 that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. It ain't by mere chance that I walked out of some of the situations that I walked out of. It's not by mere chance that I stand before you today because the adversary of my soul wanted to destroy me and everybody under the sound of my voice because if he can get us in our sin, guess what? He's got us. But when I was able to hear the voice of Almighty God and he drew me out of a situation and he placed me upon a rock and he washed me and he purged me and he cleansed me. The adversary of my soul has no power over me. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above. So when I testify, I am actually confirming where my faith lies. I am confirming that it's not my ability, it's not my talent, it's not my looks, it's nothing about me, but my faith lies in the one that is able to do all things, all things, because God is able. I remember a story. I remember standing right here, and Brother Gio would ask service after service, anybody have any prayer requests? And I'd raise my hand, I'd say I have a special and spoken request because I told the individual I wouldn't tell them but there's a lady that sister Ashley and I know that had breast cancer and her family was very very distraught and this is not saying God hears one individual's prayers over another because there was a group of people not just here but other places that was pleading and seeking the face of God so I don't care who it was but God heard the voice of someone and he interceded in somebody's life. And he receives all glory and power and praise. Amen. But this lady was going down. She was weary. She was tired. They found some mass upon her breast. They didn't know what they was going to do. Brother Terrence, they went in and they put a port in her for chemo. We begin to pray. People begin to pray. She's fixing to start chemo. They said, well, let us do one more test. Just one more time. They took the lady back. They said, we must have made a mistake. We can't find anything. Let us go ahead and take this port out. 
because we should have never had it in there in the first place. Well, her daughter-in-law came up to me and said, hey, they made a mistake. I said, whoa, time out. They didn't make no mistake. They didn't make no mistake. They do this day in and they do this day out. They know exactly what they see. But let me tell you something. I serve a God that is alive and well. And he is well able. And he did exactly what we asked him to do. And he touched that lady. So I give all power and credit and glory unto him. Because it ain't by mere chance that that happened. But it's only by the mercy and the grace of God. I could not at that moment, Sister Nadine, keep my mouth shut. And let that be given to chance. Because God done a miracle in that lady's life. If I would have sit there, I would have, it would have destroyed me. But I had to open my mouth and let them know that God is still alive and he's still on the throne. Be sure to testify of all the good things that God has done for you. Do not underestimate them no matter how big or how small. Because what he did for you, Brother Blake, he'll do for me. And what he'll do for me, he'll do for Brother David because he's the same God. Psalm 66 and 16 in the New International Version says, Come and hear all you who fear God and let me tell you what he's done for me. If you ever talk to me long enough, it ain't going to be long before you understand. You probably wish I'd shut up about 10 minutes in, but I have to tell you what God has done for me. Because he's done a lot for me. He's delivered me. He's kept me. He's protected me. He's blessed me. I didn't deserve none of it. I didn't deserve any of it. But guess what? I will give him praise. And I will not keep my mouth shut. And I will magnify him. And I will praise him. And I will bless him. Because I know what he's done in my life. Many of you have read the story in Acts chapter 3. And we read the account of Peter and John. And they were walking one day. Going to church. Matter of fact, they were headed toward the temple and there was a man being brought there and laid at the gate called Beautiful. The Bible says that he was crippled from his youth. All of his life he'd been crippled, broken, couldn't walk. They laid him at the gate Beautiful. That way everybody that was going into the temple had to pass this man. It's Kind of hard to pass somebody broken on your way to church and not do something about it, ain't it? But yet every day, Brother David, we pass them. Stop and get gas. Broken. Standing at the gas pump. They're hurt. They're wounded. They're destroyed. They don't know which way they're going to go. Same way this man was. His was just physical. But we pass them every day sometimes and don't even realize it. That's why we've got to be in tune with the man. That's why we've got to be in tune with God so we can hear the voice of God and he can lead us and direct us because we never know when we can be that light, that strength to somebody that Peter and John was to that man. Peter and John walked by the man. and They looked down upon him as he cried out, Alms, I need some money. I need a little bit of money. Just enough to eat on, just enough to get me by one more day. Never know what he was buying, maybe some bread and something to drink. But he just needed something. Peter and John, silver and gold. We ain't got it, fella. But I tell you what we do, God. We got an experience with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I tell you what I do, God. I remember God forgave me for my situation. Yeah, I denied him three times and the cock crowed and, and I thought I was done, but he forgave me. And I know he's alive and I know he's well because I've seen him for myself. And if he can do it for me, guess what? He can do for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says that his ankle bones and his legs gave strength and he stood up. And guess what he did? He didn't just stand there, but he ran into the temple worshiping and praising God. When you have an experience with the Almighty God, you will not be able to be quiet. You will have to open your mouth and acknowledge that God touched me. God changed my situation. And Sister Heidi's fixing to put Acts chapter 4 up here. We're going to start at verse 1 and go to verse 19. And this is the account that happened right after. This man was healed. It says, while Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priest and the captain of the temple guard and some of the Sadducees. 
These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus there is resurrection from the dead. Now this is the New Living Translation. It said, and they arrested them, and since it was already evening, they put them in jail until the morn. But verse 4 says, but many of the people who heard their message believed. Many of the people that heard their message believed. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you open your mouth and you begin to tell of the goodness and the mercies of God, somebody is going to hear that. And somebody, no matter who it is, is going to have a spark of faith that lights up in them, that they realize that the life that they have been desiring to live now has purpose in the one that you just mentioned, and that is Jesus Christ. That I can overcome my situation through the goodness and mercy of Almighty God. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of the men who believe now totaled 5,000 people. The next day, the council of the rulers and the elders and the teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. And Ananus and the high priest was there along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. And they brought in two disciples and they demanded, By what power or in whose name have you done this? Then guess what Peter did? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Well, let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man you crucified, by whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in Scripture where it says, The stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in none else. God has given no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. And the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. And check this out. For they could see that they were ordinary men. They didn't have any special training, Brother Robbie. They hadn't trained in the temple from their lowly years till they got big enough to know every word of what the Bible said. They didn't know all of that, but they had an experience. And they testified of their experience. And people were amazed by their experience because it says that they recognized them as men who have been with Jesus. There's no greater testimony that you could ever have in life than that to be said of you that I recognized Sister Maria as somebody that walked with Jesus. That I know that brother Larry and he's somebody that walks with Jesus. That every aspect of your life people look at you. They don't judge the outside. They don't judge what you do. But they judge your life completely. In, out, every aspect of your life. And they realize that you have walked and talked with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right next to them. There among them there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and they conferred or they talked amongst themselves. They said, what shall we do unto these men? They asked each other, we can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign and everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak the name of Jesus again. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it. We're going to gather them up. We're going to tell them just to be quiet. Same thing the enemy does to us. Just, just hush. You're a failure anyways. You've messed up too many times. You might as well be quiet. You might as well just stay down and, and out because you're nothing anyways. But guess what Peter said? Peter and John replied, Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling 
about everything that we have heard or seen and heard. We can't stop telling, Brother David. We can't stop telling. When God touches your life, you can't stop telling about it. When God heals your family and it's your baby laying there that you plead the blood over and God raises them up, you can't stop telling about it. I remember my Sophie being little one time and she had, you can ask Ashley, man, it was a pitiful. She had bad earaches, bad earaches. And one night she was crying. She said, asked for us to call upon the man of God to pray. She said, because I know he can touch Jesus. I thought, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Except we be as a little child. We're never going to enter in. But it was asking and faith believing. And then getting up out of the bed and realizing, I, I'm fine, Daddy. I'm good now. Jesus touched me. It's a miracle, church. And when we learn to open our mouth and tell of the goodness and the mercies of God, not only are we blessed, but everybody we talk to is blessed. Amen? Because they realize if God did it for somebody like that, he can do it for me as well. When you have truly been touched by the hand of the Lord, you cannot help but testify of his goodness and his mercy. Amen. What a God we serve. Closing tonight, I remember the story. I actually read it again the other night in Fox's Book of Martyrs. And Brother David, I know he will know it. And many of you others might know it, Brother Robbie and Sister Ruth. But history states that Polycarp was condemned to die. They was fixing to burn him. They was going to nail him to this stick. And he said, no. The same God that's going to keep me, he'll keep me from falling over in these old ashes in, in this fire. I ain't going to wiggle around. And, the Bi and not the Bible, but the, the history states that they tied him behind his back. And he stood there on those sticks fixing to be burned. And he cried out, 86 years have I served him. And he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king? And my Savior. You know the first scripture I read for you tonight said. And they loved not their lives unto death. They were overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Polycarp was an example of that. Brother Robbie he stood there in the face of certain death. He wasn't silent but he opened his mouth. And he said I've done served him my whole life. He's done nothing but good for me. He's blessed me. No, it ain't been a, 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 a bed of roses. There's been some tough times, Sister Nadine. I went through some rough patches. But you know what? He's the same God. He's the same God that delivered me. He's the same God that loved me when I was on top of the mountain. And he was the same God that loved me when I was wallowing around in the floor. But he is a God that I will never forsake. And they burned that man to death. But he never, ever, ever Blasphemed the name of the Lord. What a testimony that his life, what a testimony that his very life was given, magnifying God, praising the King of kings and the Lord of lords. His life was really screaming out, with all that God has done for me, how can I be silent? That's what I ask you tonight, church. And I believe the Lord has given me this. For a reason. And that reason is. There's going to be some things happen. In this place. That you ain't going to be able to keep to yourself any longer. There's going to be some miracles. Happen in this place. There's going to be some miracles that happen. At Tasters. After church. There's going to be some miracles that happen at Ramey's. While you're buying groceries. There's going to be some miracles that happen at work. When you have faith enough to step out. And believe that hey. God said do it. I was talking to a man today who was not raised like I was raised. And he said, you know, I was reading, he's a minister. And he said, I've never done anything like this in my life. He said, but I was reading in James where the Bible says, take some oil. And they said, call for the elders of the church and anoint them and pray for them and God will heal them. He said, so I went back of our fellowship hall. And with tears running down his eyes, he said, I got some vegetable oil. And I call for our deacons. This ain't the norm for their church. He said, and we stepped out in faith. And I stood there. 
He said, and I anointed them people. He said, and I read that scripture. And as I read, one by one, they got up out of their pews and they funneled down to the front. He said, and we prayed for them and miracles happened in their life. And I begin to pray, God, if he can understand that. I pray that you open his eyes and his understanding that one day he sees exactly the truth that you're going to lead him in. And he's not just going to pray God heal their body, but he's going to pray for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And that church is going to blow up and his family is going to blow up. And signs, miracles, and wonders are going to happen because there are a people that is not afraid to open their mouth and tell of the goodness and the mercies of God. Amen. Can we stand tonight and just give the Lord a hand? Hand clap of praise before we close. Magnify him and thank him for his goodness. Just for a moment, let's praise him and magnify him for all that he's done in this place. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, God. You're worthy. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Come on. I feel his spirit moving in this place. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus. God, you're worthy. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Don't be surprised when you pray for somebody. It could be this week. Don't be surprised when they look at you with a shock in their eyes this big around and say, I think God just healed me because it's going to happen, Brother Blake, Brother Terrence. It's going to happen. Church cleaning schedule this week is team number five, Sister Casey, Sister Carly. If you'd like to sign up to receive some church text. When Sister Amanda gets back, please be sure to let her know. Reverend Tim Bazelli will be preaching for us on August the 22nd. So all of you that can, please, please, please make it a point to be here for that service. Invite people because it's going to be a great word of God from him. I believe it. Also, be sure to write that in your calendar or put it in your phone or whatever you got to do. August the 22nd. Amen. Do we have any announcements, any other announcements before we're dismissed tonight? If not, Brother David, would you dismiss us, please, sir? Amen. God bless you. Love and appreciate each and every one of you.